Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for this devotional today. We are in 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 11 through 14. Great text. Uh, and by the way, I got my 1 Timothy scripture journal here in my hand. It's a great way for you to follow along. You can get that from our website today. It's got the Bible text on one side and a place to take notes on the other. And I have found that as I'm reading the Bible, it's better maybe to note take at times or write down convictions that I have about what God is speaking to me. So you can do that. Just jump on the website and grab one today. Uh, I think it'll really bless your prayer time and your reading time together with me. So let me read the text. It's a doozy today. <laughs> Here it is. It says, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Now, guys, I refuse to skip over this text for so many reasons. There's so many reasons I can't even mention them all here within a reasonable amount of time. But let's be clear about a few things first before we dive in here. I believe the Bible is God's inspired word without error and contains the only truth that we can find in this life. And this book overrides culture, even though it was spoken in, written in, and read within the culture itself. And I believe that's actually what Paul is doing here. He is overriding cultural norms and practices with God's word. And so he is reaching back in God's word as far as he can for truth that speaks to the present issues in Ephesus. And he finds biblical evidence for supporting order in this very disordered and chaotic church. That's all. Now, some of the issues that they're dealing with in Ephesus is that men are being apathetic to spiritual leadership. Imagine that. And women are stepping in and because of this becoming a little contentious. And Paul sees this exact situation, the same situation playing out in, guess where? The Garden of Eden in chapter 3 of the Bible. And so to get things back in order, he's going to give the church here some orders. And it's going to be kind of challenging and commanding, especially since culture and practice and personal opinion have taken over within the church. Imagine that. So to accentuate the point that he's going to make, Paul reaches back to a time before the culture of sin. Before the culture of sin. Think about that just for a second. He reaches back to the intent of God in chapters 1 and 2 and how sin infiltrated the world in chapter 3. And he points out two very important things that are going to bring order back to the church. First, that originating authority was given by God to Adam. And second, that Eve's deception led to the first transgression. That's what he says here. And therefore, Paul is showing <laughs> that the problem back there is the same as the one in Ephesus that they're having today. Men aren't leading and they need to be. That's the problem, right? The bigger problem. But let's be careful. It's not just generalized male leadership, but men who the church designates as leaders with specific attributes, which we're going to look at actually in chapter three. And as we're going to see, these men need to be godly men who are worthy of being followed. It's not just generalized men. Paul does not infer generalized submission to the male gender in every context, even those of bad character, right? But instead, he assumes and clarifies that these need to be godly men who are designated leaders within the context of the church. At least that's the situation here. So let me say this. We all need to understand how to submit to authority. Everyone, both men and women, inside the church and outside the church, inside our home and outside our home, inside the workplace and outside the workplace. And for your information, in the church, both men and and women are called to submit. Not just women. For example, I am not an elder or a pastor designated as a leader in my church. Therefore, I, a godly man, must also submit. So can I just say this today? Let's stop taking so, much, so many issues and finding ways around passages 
like these in the Bible. Let's just do it God's way. It's doing it our way that got us into this problem in the first place. Let's just submit to him, the leader, and do it the way God wants it done. Can I say that? <laughs> okay. Guys, thanks for joining me for this devotional today. I hope it is, uh, well, blessed you in some way. And get out there and be a great man today. All right. I'll see you right back here again.